Bob's Garden. I'm Bob. Today we are going to make a terrarium. There are many kinds of containers for terrariums. It's your own personal choice of what kind you would like to use. But they can be very um, wide like this, they can be narrow, they can be square, and you can even use a ball jar. When we plant a terrarium, we have to have the right plant for the right place. It's very important. The ideal plants for terrarium, terrariums are tropical house plants. And you want to get them into small pots like this when you buy them. You want to start with small materials. Something like this would require something more open. Um, something like this would also be fine in here. In here, it may be a little bit too large. And something like this ball jar will only maybe take one plant in it. So we want to choose the correct plants. Now you may go online and see um, a terrarium planted with succulent and cacti. That is not really appropriate. That might last a few months um, to maybe half a year, but for long-term success, which is where I want to take you, you want to use tropical houseplants because they require the high humidity. These are very low maintenance. There are some times when you don't have to water these for months and months on end. The only kind of maintenance you're going to do, and we'll talk more about that more later, is cleaning them up from time to time. So this is our goal. Now, the other plants that can work in this are the telangias, like we talked in our other video on that, the air plants. Uh, but they would require a shallow pot like this. Now you see, none of these pots have drainage. And we're going to need to provide for drainage. Now you can try terrariums with drainage holes, if you can find ones that are already uh, set up. Um, and that might possibly work for some types of cacti, but again, it couldn't be a high lip like this. It would have to be very, very shallow. So if you want success, use these tropical house plants. So for this project, you're gonna need a few things. We're gonna need some kind of scoop. You can use a trowel. These are my bonsai uh, scoops that I use for bonsai soil, but you can use also a trowel. Uh, a chopstick that's been sharpened is handy. Scissors. We will need some charcoal, this horticultural charcoal right here. And you see it says improves drainage, absorbs harmful impurities, and perfect for planting terrariums. That's what we want and containers with or without drainage holes. So that's the stuff you want. We take a generous handful. This is my handful. And uh, of this charcoal that's been washed, and I mix it in with pea stone. Now it has to be this small pea stone. It can't be any larger than this or it's going to impede drainage. And we've taken this charcoal, this has been washed until it completely is clear water. To keep running a hose over this, we don't want any of the um, dirt that uh, comes in this bag to clog the drainage. So it's very important to wash this very thoroughly. So I've mixed my generous amount of charcoal in here, handful, and with this, this pea stone. So this is what it looks like, all mixed together. The charcoal provides uh, the good uh, things that we need for a closed container. So now we're going to put about an inch or so. Now, the amount of drainage that you put in has to be suitable for the container. A smaller container may only take like a half an inch of this. The fish bowl we showed you earlier, probably about three quarters of an inch. This I'm going to put about an inch of soil in here. So we'll just take this like this. You see how handy this scoop is. We can get this all in here. And then now once I got some in here, I can distribute it 
and we'll just you see there's a little bit of moisture in here from when I washed it it's okay okay that's good so that looks about like an inch to me and now we're just going to put our soil in there. So we have moistened the soil previously and it's perfect when we can take the soil like this and hold it and it stays together. We don't want this to be too wet and we certainly don't want it to be too dry. So we're going to put an appropriate amount of soil in here, a couple inches. Now, how you design this is up to you. You have many, many different options. I kind of like to make one part higher and one part a little lower. I need a little bit more in there. But you can make it all flat too. So I'm going to make this up a little bit higher here. And we just gently tap this down. So now I have my selection of terrarium plants here, um, and we want them to be small, so we'll just take this out here, and you'll see it looks like this, and we break this root ball up a little bit, like this, and I'll take this one too. You see this one's uh, even. Uh, more root bound here so we'll just slice this up like this make some slits in it and then we have this kind of ground cover this kind of neat and I go to the nursery and I just you know see things that please my eye and you should do the same thing so we're not going to use these ones these are for a little bit larger planting and uh, so let me think about this. Well, let's put, uh, I like this one up in here. So we'll make a little place to plant this. We'll make a little hole like this. And we'll put our plant in there. And we'll tamp it down. And let's see here. Now I like to work with odd numbers. Now you could just put one plant in there. I don't like doing something like this and that. Um, it just, to me, to my eyes, it doesn't quite look right. So we'll put this one in here. And you can use this chopstick again to tamp down and we can work some of the soil into the root ball. And then we'll use this ground cover in here. I had some idea what I wanted to do beforehand. And you can play around with these. You get them in here, you say, oh, I don't quite know the way that looks. And you can move things around. And I am going to create a little bit of interest in here. I've got some polished stone. Now this type of stone, you never ever want to use this in the bottom of the terrarium. This is just does not work for, for drainage. But for top dressing or some kind of interest in here, I'm going to make a little garden path here. Kind of curve it around. Okay, that looks good. Now you don't have to do this. I mean, this is just one of the things that I like to do from time to time. And then we have some moss that I took from my yard here. And it helps to absorb moisture. And you'll see that it's very, um, there's no really soil on here, just a very little amount. And um, we'll put some moss in here. This will this will grow. I've always just loved the way this looks when I get the moss in here. We make like this kind of like a river a river bank here for the stones, and it looks very very natural. I love this.
Oh, look at how nice that is. We'll tamp that down. And let's take a look at that. That's quite nice. Okay, so let's talk about maintenance. Our first rule of maintenance is never ever let this get into full direct sun because the sun will come through this glass and fry everything to bits. So a bright diffuse light slanted sun through a curtain, that's okay. So we want to keep this out of very bright light. Um, the other thing is that I can't tell you when this will need to be watered. It depends on your house, it depends on your container, but if we put a top on this, we can cut a piece of plexiglass for this top, and we put a top on this, we may not have to water for months on end. If we leave it open like this, then it's going to require uh, more frequent watering. And I, uh, when, you, when you've got this all together, what I want to do is just to miss this. We don't want to just pour water into this because it's going to all turn to mud. Now, if you notice the top drying out when it's open like this, if you keep an open container, then you'll want to mist more frequently. It depends on your house. The other thing we need to watch for as time goes on, especially when they're completely closed, is it has a tendency to develop some mold on the top of the soil. So you'll take a, uh, a knife uh, and scrape that mold off and then put down some newspaper over that to keep the spores from coming back for a couple days and then that will get rid of the mold. And uh, the other thing that needs to happen with this is uh, just enjoy it. <laughs> That's it. No fertilizer ever. Um, oh, I shouldn't say ever because way down the road, I'm talking like maybe five or six, seven years or more, uh, you may notice some of these plants start to get a little bit pale and then you can use a very, very small amount of fertilizer. It's like a, a quarter inch, uh, a quarter of a teaspoon in a um, gallon of water. And uh, a good uh, 16, 16, 16 like the uh, Max C uh, seaweed fertilizer. Uh, your NPK numbers being nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, that's the 16, 16, 16, uh, would make a good fertilizer. But ordinarily, this does not require fertilizer, only in the long haul. So this, this kind of thing that you can enjoy for a very, very long time. They're very easy to care for. They make ideal gifts, I think. Um, you put one together in a smaller bowl, with one plant in it and you can use that uh, as a gift. I think that's a nice idea. And um, so get in there and make your own terrarium and have some fun with it. So thank you for watching and we'll see you next time on Bob's Gardens. Please share, subscribe, and comment on these videos. And remember, be curious, not judgmental.